name is Mario Giagostino. I'm the Deputy City Manager for Public Health and Safety. I've been with the City of El Paso for 31 years. We're used to these surges. This one, what we're preparing for now, you know, Title 42 did expire last night. It, it, it's, it's, it's at that low. So it does feel like that calm before the storm. We know that there was over 17, almost 1,800 apprehensions by Border Patrol in the El Paso sector yesterday alone. We know that their, their CPC processing center is over capacity. There are well over 6,000 in custody at this point in time. And so those numbers will see a throughput. There will be released. And so we'll be seeing those numbers coming throughout the weekend. But it's that surge coming from across the border that we just, we're not seeing. You know, whether, whether they're waiting, whether they're trying to take the, the legal pathway, that time will tell with that. What we're seeing now is, is the shelters that are, that are full and in capacity. Those are our, our, our normal homeless shelters. So those are the two main shelters that are there, taking care of our homeless community right here in El Paso. And so those are the ones that are seeing that, that little spike. We have been preparing. We've been preparing for a long time. We've got two schools that we've converted into two mass shelter operations and so we've opened one of them last night but the numbers are, are really low we, we housed 150 people last night and we're seeing what with title 42 going away they don't have that option to, to return anymore you know right now they put a stay last night on, on the ruling where they couldn't do the rapid paroles well, rapid paroles it means people are released a lot quicker than normal and that's where it really burdens the city. So with that going away, I think that's why we see it today with, with lesser numbers. I think if that hadn't had a stay on that last night, we would be seeing a large influx right now of them decompressing their shelters. Because like I said, they're well over 6,000 at this point in time. When they get to that, that capacity, if they go to those rapid paroles, that's where we see a lot of three, throughput. Then we also, with Title 42 going away and, and the restrictions with, with Title 8, I mean, there's some serious penalties for those crossing in illegally. So we're worried that they're going, they're, that they're going to continue that pathward of trying to get into the country. And while it's illegal, that means they're not going to be showing up at the shelters. They're not going to be, and so we'll have them within the streets. And that's where we've had issues over the past couple of weeks. And it's that population that's very difficult to take care of because, like I said, we cannot legally offer them assistance. And so that's what creates the difficulties here in our community. We are all one nation. We're one community. And while we are got vast land around us right here, the people who are crossing through, they don't want to stay here. They want to get as far from the border as they can. Most of them are choosing the East Coast, whether it's Jersey, New York, Philadelphia, it's just all along the East Coast. And that's where they're choosing to go. So this population is going to continue to move onward. And they will, you know, they might not be seeing it today, but more than likely in the next few days, they're going to start seeing their population increase. And these are where places where people want them to call it home. And so as a nation, we should all be concerned. It is important to keep track of it. There needs to be policy changes. At the federal level, they need to come together and they need to make the policy changes in order to control the flow. While I understand people want to come to America, they want that shot, they want that piece of the American dream, completely understand that. But there has to be an orderly process to it. And to allow it to happen in these border communities makes it difficult for us. And it's, it's hard to handle. While we seem prepared, it's because we've lived through several surges over the past few years. And we've seen what those surges can do. I mean, it's, it's the people living in the street the ones who are coming in here completely illegal, who are, who are just camping out in our streets. It's the, the having to go through multiple times a day and clean the streets just to make sure it's sanitary and it's health and we're not risking those those issues. Coming in is not, is not just a free for all, that it, there has to be a process. You have to register, you have to set your appointment. You know, I was hearing this morning that they're setting court dates out that, until 2035. And that's, you know, you know, what kind of a fair shot are they getting? I understand they want to come and they want to work, but are they going to be allowed to work in that time? And so I think that's the policies they need to clarify so that they can be self-sufficient and not rely on the system. And it's a concern. It's a concern for the safety of, of not only the migrants themselves, but the community at large. And so, yeah, I think the, it's time for those policy changes.